Okay, now, I'm going to give you, I said, three different strategies, right? Mercifully for you, the last two strategies are much quicker. It's just that this is kind of like the chief one, so I wanted to start out with that. Sign was what we just had a look at. Show that something positive or, or negative, and then you can get to the result that you're after. This one down here, I'm going to rub this now. Uh, this second strategy is that you can also not just take two things and compare one to be bigger than the other. You can actually have a string of them. You can link these together. Um, I was going to say like Voltron, but that's too old a reference to you guys. So what's a robot that combines together, Mrs. Lees? I don't know. Anyway, maybe Mr. Saw, you can help me out. Yeah, Power Rangers, you guys. Anyway, okay. So this is the name that I give to this idea that you can link inequalities together by saying, you know, in fact, I'll write it down for you. Uh, if you've got three things and you know their order, if you've got three objects, three mathematical, like numbers, functions, whatever, if you know, for instance, that A is greater than B, and that in turn, if I link onto that, that that's greater than C, what can you tell me about the relationship between A and C? Yeah, A is bigger than C, because like I'm bigger than you and you're bigger than you. I was going to make a statement about like the Australian Open and like tennis players beating other tennis players, and then I realized, oh no, you can't, because sometimes this guy actually can, but it's like scissors, paper, rock situation. So we're not going to get too whirling into that. This implies A is greater than C. So, really, really quick example. Have a look at this inequality with P's and Q's that I've just handed to you down the bottom of the board. I want to prove that P over Q is going to be greater than this fraction here. Now, if all you knew about was the kind of strategies we looked at here, you're somewhat in trouble. Spoilers, okay? Um, you might say, I'll do my left-hand side, take away right-hand side thing, okay? I just invite you right now, just write down the first line. You don't have to take it any further. Just write down the first line of left-hand side, take away right-hand side for this. And then think about where are you going to go next? You're like, I don't know common denominators, I'll save you some time, it just ends up a mess of P's and Q's. There's no, there's no obvious squares, there's no obvious reciprocals, you're just like, I don't know what to do here. Okay? But if you think about this, and maybe a numerical example might help you here, not as a proof, but to help you think about the structure of your proof. This is like a one, I was going to say two lines, but it's not even two lines, this is like a one and a half line proof, just by using linked inequalities. Think about this with me. Give me an example of a P over Q. Let's just think of a couple of numbers. What do you like? Two over? Two over five. Two over five, sure. Two over five. Do you agree I can make an ordering statement about this fraction if, for instance, I said, well, let's just take that numerator and subtract one? Like so. You agree with that? What's the ordering statement? What's the inequality that you can say between these two fractions? Thank you. <laughs> I know it's the end of the day, but we know that two fifths is bigger than one fifth. Why do you think, by the way, I subtracted one? Because that's what the question is asking, right? Now I can go again. I can go one step further because I just dealt with the numerator there, right? I can make another statement that a fifth, I can make this smaller again, but not by changing the numerator. Let's change the denominator, denominator this time. What should I do to it? I should add one to it. Well, I've, I can add anything that I want. As long as I'm making it bigger, like say six, clearly, even though you're like, I didn't need to do this like because numbers, but here it's not quite so clear because it's all algebraic. Does that make sense? So here comes my one and a half line proof. I'm just going to do this, but algebraically rather than numerically. Okay, here we go. So I can say P over Q is bigger than, what was, what was the first thing that I did? Yeah, I just changed my numerator. I think I subtracted, didn't I? Numerator's got to get smaller, yeah? So it's P minus 1 over Q. That's an uncontroversial statement, okay? And then I go, this is my extra half a line, right? Um, I go and I change my denominator instead. When you increase the size of a denominator, you reduce the size of the entire fraction. So here goes P minus 1 over Q plus 1. Happy with that? Now this linked inequality thing, uh, it's going to happen, actually we kind of already did a little bit of it by doing this. You see here what we were doing? We had something that's greater than or equal to zero, then it was greater than zero. So you actually have it sort of tucked away in there implicitly. So, Question. Uh, I'll come to you in a second, Emmanuel. So, so first we have to discuss the sign of P and Q as a 
the positive, 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 negative, and all that. And so, yes, and yes. Second of all, in that case, Q cannot be negative 1. So in this case here, right, what you'll see is every question you're about to do in exercise 2D, um, it's going to have not just the thing that they want you, where did I write it, the thing that they want you to prove, but they also make a long and somewhat boring string of qualifiers on what kind of number, uh, what kind of numbers are P and Q. Are they real? Are they integers? Are they positive? Are they negative? Right? Why are they all there? Yes, exactly. When you can think about like weird counter examples for this, if you have a look at trivial cases. That makes sense? You also had a question, Manuel. Uh, I, I still don't even think that Okay. Yeah. I'm glad I made your approval. Thank you. All right. So I, uh, I promised three strategies, right? Number one was looking for the starts with an S. Sign. Sign. Prove it's positive or negative, or find some appropriate related object that you can prove positive or negative. The second one was about linking together or stringing together a set of inequalities. And then the last one, strategy number three, I think I can write it up here. Strategy number three is to start with a given result. Let me say it again. You want to start with a given result. And many of your proofs will kind of, what they're trying to do is give you a leg up into the result that you're trying to prove. So, you know, use the stepping stone they provided, that given result, and then use that as a launch pad. I'm mixing metaphors here um, to prove whatever result you want. So here's an example that I pulled out already. Given. So here's my launch pad. A squared. Oh, is it A squared? It is 2. Plus B squared is greater than 2AB. Prove. Okay. All right. So, what are we talking about here? Now, as I've just kind of flagged for you, right? It's just like a, a big, hey, I'm trying to get your attention here. If they give you some important result, I mean, maybe you could prove this some other way, but I'm trying to give, I'm trying to give you a hand here, right? I'm trying to help you out. So, how can we use this? Um, and by the way, all the normal caveats, like A, B, and C, they're all distinct. We're dealing with real numbers, of course. Um, you might be able to see, for instance, like, oh, I can think about this kind of thing happening. Um, that's going to be useful to me, potentially. How will I go about this? Hmm. Well, remember, I, mean, I said to you before, this is our, our launch pad, right? I'm going to use this as my starting point. So, in my proof, the first thing I'm going to state is there a result? And then I want to think about, is there some way that I can, um, no, that was the one I wanted. Is, that, is there some way that I can use this to progress into what the question is now asking? Emmanuel, do you have a suggestion or a question? Mm, a question. Yeah. If, if that statement is not given, yep. can I just quote this straight away? Uh, this, this here? Yes. Short answer, no. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Part of the reason why we're saying that it's given is so that you know you don't have to prove it. But if I don't, then you probably need to prove it, right? Um, you, know, you know these things I said before though, here, these, under these strategies? These things you don't have to prove, and that's kind of why I gave them to you, right? But pretty much everything else, you have the tools, you have the knowledge, go for it, okay? So, I have this statement, I already know this to be true. But the thing that I'm trying to prove, it has like not just A's and B's in it, it's got C's. Any suggestion how I could potentially use this result to help me get toward here? What do you think, Pahan? Uh, repeat that A plus B for like AC and BC and then I can that like Okay. Did you quite catch that, right? What's happening here? You actually gave us, you gave us the whole proof, okay? Yeah. So let's just pedal back for a moment. This result here, which is given, right? I know this to be true, but it doesn't have all the pronumerals that I want. So I somehow have to introduce them. Now, A, B, and C just all being regular old numbers, I can do some substitution here, can't I, right? Instead of having a B here, there's no reason why I can't substitute C, which would mean that the right-hand side is not 2AB, it's 2AC. No big deal. Now, this is promising because you're like, oh, I've got the A squareds and the B squareds and the C squareds. And then you just kind of are ticking off for yourself. I've got ABs and ACs. Have a look at the result we're trying to prove. What's missing? BC. Yeah, there's BC here, right? So I'm going to go and substitute this for C. So I'll write this to BC. OK? Now, in order to then go further, and again, Pahan suggested we, we take a sum here, right? I need to be able to refer to each of these inequalities. So I'm going to give them names, just so I, rather than saying 
those things up there. So let's give them names like so, just like you've been used to doing in simultaneous equations, except they're simultaneous inequalities. What will be your next line to get you to the next flow of logic? Being that I've just named these. Yeah, I'm going to add them, right? And I've just given them names, so I can say 1 plus 2 plus 3. Add all my left-hand sides, add all my right-hand sides, and I'm going to get a nice equation here. So don't skip this step, by the way. It's tempting to start simplifying immediately. But this topic is, after all, called proof. So show me everything. Don't skip. What have I got here? 2ab, 2ac, 2 BC. I'll leave it as an exercise to the reader to do the immense amount of work left between here and the result you're trying to prove. Does that make sense? Can you see here that often the hard part is actually not the algebra, it's the thinking through what's the path through this question and also it's about setting up your logic appropriately, not beginning with the thing that you're trying to prove and then manipulating and like wow amazing I proved that it was true. It's because you started there. Make sense? Now where we're going to finish up is all of the stuff we've been looking at that is uh, algebraic inequality specific. All this like, oh, you can do different things to this side or you do look at, prove that the left-hand side minus right-hand side is positive. All that business, right? That's specific to inequalities, but please remember that everything else you've learned within this topic is still tools in your toolbox. So if you have a look at a question like this, the question doesn't give you any clues Partly because like, what's marvellous about this is there's at least three, and I know way more, uh, at least three distinct ways you could go about proving this. And part of the fun is, can I think about like, what's the most efficient way to get there, the laziest and least amount of work? One of our favourites that we learnt like, last week is the proof by contradiction. Right? And this is a really good candidate for a proof by contradiction. Think with me, how does a proof by contradiction structure. And I've given you a big clue right from the outset. What, what's the thing that I'm assuming? Yeah. You assume the inverse, which is a plus b squared, is less than void. Hmm, you're so very close. I'm going to be very mean and cruel. Uh, you said assume the inverse. The inverse actually is a thing in logic, but it's actually a separate thing. It's not within the scope of the course. You can do some things with it if you want, but actually the thing that we want is not the inverse of this. Has another name, starts with an N. Negation. It's the negation. And they actually meet, they mean subtly different things, so do be oh. careful. Okay? Oh. Oh. Um, the word we used was opposite, and that's kind of like colloquial. Negation is the real technical term you mean. Inverse is another technical term again. Oh. What does the negation of this look like? It's actually very easy when you're dealing with algebra. Less than. Yeah, I, I, I don't want it to be greater than or equal to. I just flip that thing around. And I also don't include the boundary case, right? So what I want to show is that if I go from here, I should be able to do some manipulation to this thing and land on something absurd, something contradictory. Make sense? Let's have a go, right? What's your first instinct? What could we do with this? I'll just expand it, see what happens, right? Let's have a go. I'm going to get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Happy times. Nothing's happened to the right-hand side. What is the most obvious thing jumping out at you now? Minus yeah, I'm going to collect some like terms. That leaves me with minus 2ab on this side. And once you've written that on the left-hand side, again, there's another thing jumping out at you. What can you do here? I can factorize it back. And factorizing it back gives you something that is puzzling, right? Because you can say, hang on, hang on. I'm squaring something. Apparently, that's negative. Now, we know that can happen but not in this world, right? Not within this domain. So the structure of the proof, I would say, but, right? I can say A and B, A and B are real, right? Therefore, I'll just, that implies that A minus B all squared, A minus B all squared, that has to be this, right? That's what I, what I can do with real numbers. But these two statements together, especially right after one another, now I can say it's a contradiction. So, contradiction, put an exclamation mark for a dramatic effect, and then that means that whatever I began with my assumption 
which is, you know, led to this contradiction, that must be false. So I can say this thing here, a plus b all squared is less than 4ab. I've just established that can't possibly be true, so I put a dash through it. And so the negation of this is what I started with. Therefore, a plus b all squared must be greater than or equal to, right? So even though a question may not explicitly say, hey, use proof by contradiction, use proof by contraposition. Remember, these tools often make things a lot easier for you. Okay, any questions?